Welcome to the Buck Stops here, the official audio show of NotInHallOfFame.com, and I'm your host, Kirk Buckner, the Buck. I'm the guy who owns NotInHallOfFame.com and the sister sites, the fictitious athlete hall and the fictitious rock and roll hall of fame. And soon another project that uh, we're going to be really excited to talk about in the near future. That's going to be done with my partner on this show, Evan Nolan, and we've got uh, quite a few things to talk about today. We're going to look at the passings of two number 44s, two legends uh, in, in sports. Floyd Little passed away from the Denver Broncos, and Paul Westfall, a Hall of Fame basketball uh, player and a really good coach too, a uh, true legend with the Phoenix Suns. We're also going to look at the big sort of news of the week. The Pro Football Hall of Fame has announced their 15 finalists. As usual, it's not really a big shock. Usually when we go from the 25 to the 15, we can predict, predict them pretty well, and, and we did. But we give a little bit of a preview as to who we think is going to advance. Some we think are locks, some we think have a pretty good shot, and there's a couple that, yeah, it's just not going to happen. Without further ado, here's Evan. Evan, I, 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 I need to open up with the words of wisdom in this trouble time. And I'm going to say a patriot, but not meaning a patriot that way. A true patriot. You mean a New England patriot. A... Hmm. Well, he might be a fan of the New England Patriots. I, I don't actually know what football team he's a fan of. But a patriot of Iran who came to the United States. I encourage everyone to go follow the teachings of the Iron Sheik, who had this to say upon what sort of transpired in Washington, D.C. I will lead by example. If the American people can follow and make peace with each other, and then I make peace with the Hulk Hogan. That's how we put it. <laughs> this is sad day, but together we can fix it, Bubba. I mean what I say. Today he also said yeah, this can. he also said this pearl of wisdom, and I'll say I'll try to do it in his accent. If you wish upon a star, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Yeah, he, he 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 sounds. He actually probably sounds more like a Bills fan. That sounds more Bills mafia to me. So. It, it could be. It could be. Uh, don't know, but I I'm with the Iron Sheik on this one. That is my political comment. We've done enough political commentary. We've done enough enough racial commentary. We will again at some point. Not today for what I'm calling season two, episode one. We've been renewed. My God, the negotiations were difficult. Yeah, it was pretty much. I just sent you a tweet. You still want to do this? Yeah. <laughs> well, that that we doubled our salaries as well. So. Oh yeah, that's true too. I don't know where I'm going to yeah. spend that extra nothing. <laughs> but I'll, I'll come up with probably, something. Probably at the liquor store. <laughs> that that's that's probably the most likely place. You know that and the bottles I'll bring back. It's hey, I got a profit. Look at that. Hmm. So, do we go right into a couple passings that started off the new year? Or do we have a little bit of soapbox climbing? I just did mine. I just stole up the chic, cheeky babies. Yeah. Let me, let me, let me start with a, a, different sort, a couple of different sort of passings. I know we're going to get to some pretty big names who passed away this week. Mm -hmm. I just want to say a very, uh, very sad farewell to a couple of, uh, of minor character actors who I enjoyed very much who passed away since we were last on here. Mm -hmm. uh, starting, starting with uh, yesterday, Marion Ramsey passed away. Mm -hmm. And you and I were talking about this. You know who Marion Ramsey was, of course, most among other things, but mostly known for... I I didn't know if she did. Well, I, I, I'm sure I've seen her in something else, but I only remember her as Hooks in Police Academy series. Yeah, Cadet Laverne Hooks. She was the uh, very unintimidating voice mm -hmm. from Police Academy. She becomes our uh, our third cadet to pass away uh, from that series, joining Hightower and uh, the first one to die in Fortress Tackleberry. Oh, um, but yeah, the, I didn't know he yeah, passed. Tackleberry. Uh, yeah, talk about that. He's only fifty. He had a heart attack. Oh dear. Um, he's making a mini career comeback. They had uh, fantastic 
um, cleaners, you know, the, like the product that, uh, that helps you, you know, scrub your, your, uh, countertops had a, had him in commercial. They had cleaning costs. Oh, in. that's you know, right. With one and somebody else. Yes. And, uh, they'd be like, it's like, uh, they'd have an emergency like, Oh, we have a four Oh nine in progress, which was a great way to rip on one of their competitors. Um, but yeah, he passed away way back in 01 and then, um, and Hightower passed away somewhere 2010, 2011 at time period. Mm-hmm. Looks like we're losing one every 10 years. Now look at, think about it. I think it's 2001, 2011, 2021. Mm. So yeah, Officer Laverne Hooks passed away at the age of 73 yesterday. So I, uh, I posted the, the, her driving test, uh, scene. No. <laughs> Bruce Academy one. Uh, I pe- I did it right up to the point she ran over the guy. Yeah, I, because I wanted him to be responsible for I, the very next scene. Yeah, I I already knew where that was. <laughs> I was gonna I was about to ask you that, but you kind of beat that beat me to it. Yeah, I I didn't want to have to go through uh, high tower. The reason high tower flipped the car. So although although the way with the way things have been going the last week or so, I'm okay with. With uh, the consequences of uh, high tower flipping the car, combined with high towers, you know, late night joyride the night before, so, um, yeah, shot, shot in the mean streets of Toronto. Yeah, Toronto has been been uh, many cities in movies before. I, I still am uh, the movie War of the Worlds with um, with Tom Cruise back away. Is that oh five or so it was an okay movie. That was entirely ruined for me when they allegedly got to Boston uh, at the end of the movie, and Boston was clearly Toronto. Was the CN Tower in the scene? Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, it was. It was very clearly not Boston. So, anyway, yeah. yeah, So we we lost uh, we lost uh, Marion Ramsey yesterday, and Mm -hmm. someone we lost on New Year's Eve. Oh. Do you know who Gary Howard Clark was? I do not. Did you ever watch Day of the Dead? No. George Romero's Day of the Dead? I have not. Uh, okay. Okay, so he was Private Steel and, and Day of the Dead. He's also married the mob and hackers and big and a few other things. Just none of those character actors like, oh yeah, that guy. But he also passed away at the age of also 73. Mm-hmm. Um, or on New Year's Eve. He said so, big? A couple of, what couple did of he- characters, actors from... What did he play in Big? From my childhood, he was in the movie. In Big? Yeah. Uh, what's his character's name, Big? He was just a ticket taker in Big. He was a oh. minor. He's a three men and a baby. He's one of those guys who just showed up. You're like, oh, it's that guy. He's very, very distinctive looking. Okay. In Cadillac Man, he was in um, Married to the Mob. I like, think he was in a bunch of little movies like that. So Three Men and a Baby, anyway. also filmed in Toronto. Well, that's fine. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that seems appropriate. So, anyway, now that we've gotten a uh, palate cleanser with Hook. Um, unfortunately, he's passed away. I will say that the one good piece of news, and I will take some responsibility for this, is that the beige mistress took the week off. I'm taking some responsibility because it was my birthday mm. on uh, on Tuesday, and I took a shot of unicum on my birthday, <laughs> which is an action drink from Hungary. And then had to like drink two things of water immediately to get the taste out of my mouth. But I'm presuming that must have appeased her for the week. So, wow. So I, I had no idea that she took these kind of sacrifices. So basically, it's sacrifices of she, your liver. Yeah, I don't know if she. Well, it's not just the liver. It's everything. It's everything from the, like tongue on down. You get sacrificed when you're drinking Unicum. So, um, I, I think. Yeah, I, I think, uh, isn't that a bad porno movie? Tongue on down. <laughs> Sorry, it is now. Yes, <laughs> starring uh, so, Michael Winslow. I didn't hear who you starring. You broke up. Oh, I was saying Michael Winslow because he might. Why not? <laughs> yeah, true. So, but still living, Michael Winslow. Thankfully. Hmm. Anyway, uh, although I do have to say the weirdest celebrity death of last week. Did the whole thing with Tanya Roberts is very strange. Yeah, she died twice. Like, 
As someone said, I'm so glad that Tanya Roberts didn't live to see this, didn't live to see this, and then didn't live to see this again. <laughs> Damn. It mean, mean, she, they announced she passed away, and then she announced she was alive, and then she was dead the next day. And in the meantime, TMZ was so mad. TMZ's headline writer was like, uh, Tanya Roberts still alive, despite assertion from, uh, from uh, her publicist that she had died. Like, TMZ was furious at the publicist of Tanya Roberts, and she was still alive. It's very, very strange. Yeah, that's the angle they should be taking. No, I ever tell you that before we move on to the two deaths, uh, TMZ wreaked havoc in my wife's life for a day. Really? Yep. Yes, they did. How? Probably, yeah, it's uh, probably one of those things you're, you're never going to figure out. So I'll just get right to it rather than play the guessing game. So my, okay. my wife uh, was working as the director of rooms at the Jasper Park Lodge. TMZ makes okay. an announcement that... Harry and uh, Megan were going to honeymoon at the Jasper Park Lodge. Well, okay. No one at the lodge knew anything uh, about that. <laughs> Whoops. Which apparently, so I, I, we they still don't know where the hell that came from, or whether that was uh, whether that was discussed someplace from a place even higher up than her boss. But that's what she woke up to, just like piles of messages. So is it true? Is it true? Like, is what true? Is Harry coming? So then there was like news people just sort of like come, like just making their way just so that they could get some kind of footage as to where the, where those two were going to potentially stay, which is for the record, a place that I've walked my dog many places and he's taken a dump in front of those, in front of that cabin. I think I've got a picture of that on Instagram. On mine, he's got his own Instagram, which you can follow at Jasper underscore the friendly Corgi. Don't know. <laughs> Excellent. Cross promotion, baby. Well, well TMZ is not going to be have an angry title about us, too, I'm sure. So Probably not. But, hey, you never know. <laughs> you, you never know. True. So I, I'm not a I'm not a big believer in numerology, but if I was, the number forty four was a cursed number on January second. So that was not your lucky number if you were going to the Chinese restaurant. Well, certainly no, probably not. So, who do you want to start with? Uh, I think the one who got the least press, which is a little surprising to me, uh, and that'd be Floyd Little. Yeah, for a little um, Mr. Bronco, even more than even more than John Elway. Um, so I know that uh, he was only inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame a few years ago as a senior candidate. Um, but he, in many ways, many people said, essentially saved the Broncos franchise. They mm-hmm. they were such a bad franchise that they might have moved. Uh, had he not right. had he not come around, so which which it's hard to imagine that now because Denver's such a great sports city, but that mm-hmm. wasn't always the case at all. No, I mean the, their most fam- their most famous fan probably still ever is that guy who used to wear nothing but the bucket, right? Or the nothing oh, but the barrel. God, yeah, what was his name? Crazy George. Something like that, right? And he, he wore that because I don't know. Well, I actually can't say why no, he wore it, but <laughs> well, like, <laughs> let's not speculate. I, I've already gone it, terrible places on this show, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Do you have anything you want to say about Four Little? Yeah, I mean, there's one thing that I, I didn't realize uh, when I was when I was reading him. I. I I always thought that he was maybe one of these guys that I never quite thought was a pro football hall of famer, but then I'm looking at his production uh-huh. on a really bad team. And that from a five year period, I believe it was, uh, was it say 68 to 73. I might be off on that, but at, nevertheless, a five year period, he was the all time leader in yards from scrimmage. That says a uh-huh. lot when you know, you've got no hall of famers on your team around you. Yeah. Yeah, he uh, he was first team all for 69, 
Second year all pro in 70, 71, led the NFL in rushing yards in 71, led the NFL in touchdowns in 73, pro bowler five times from 68 to 71 and 73. Um, only played eight years in the league, which is part of the reason it's, you know, may not be as standout as everything else, but he yeah. was, uh, he was, uh, incredible as, a, as, a as, um, spokesperson mm-hmm. for the, for the, uh, Denver Broncos. Cause back, so he's elected in 2010 and back then, I don't know if you remember, they were basically the Broncos fans are probably the loudest and maybe the most justified fans that the NFL hated them. I mean, taking Bengals fans out of it who have never been loud about things. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Broncos back then, I think had two Hall of Famers in their history by 2010. Like when El- it was Elway and I can't remember who the other one was. And that was it for their entire history. And like they hate us, they hate us. And then, in the sense, then they got Floyd Little and Shannon Sharp and, and Gary Zimmerman, and I think there was a one other who's gotten in. Well, um, and Pat Bowen and too. And Pat Bowen's got in. That's true. Um, so it's not quite as bad, but for a franchise that proud, uh, Little getting in meant a lot to everything, they, everyone basically. Um, so also, by the way, he was played in a movie by the late Chadwick Boseman. I read that too. Yeah, the Express, the Ernie Davis story about uh, Heisman Trophy winner Ernie Davis was a teammate of Little's. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, imagine but, that. I, don't know. I mean, like he, how good, and he was a three-time All-American, and in a ten-year in, in a ten-year period, he was their third best running back, behind Davis and Jim Brown. Holy crap! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like, that's absolutely insane to be... And I don't think he would have a problem with saying that he was the third best of that crew. And he was still so good. If you've got Ernie Dave... Or not Ernie Dave, sorry. If you had uh, Floyd Little when he was playing at Syracuse as your, as your running back for your college, and he, you think, okay, that's going to be your best guy for any 10-year stretch, you say, absolutely, I'll take it. Of course. Yeah. And he was the third. Go figure. But yeah, R.A.P. Floyd Little. Uh, I'm trying to see what it did say he died of. I think it was cancer, I believe. I think they both passed yeah, he, away from he, various he, cancer. He had cancer. Yes. So I'm presuming that, uh, I mean, it, it said back in May that he was, he was fighting cancer. I'm presuming that's what it was. Mm-hmm. But I did actually see it. It's a thing on it. So. And, then, and then we had the other number, 44. Mm. The... Uh, the progenitor of the, the the joke for the 44 for the Boston Celtics is that it goes to the best white player. And one of the first guys to wear 44 for the Celtics was uh, the late Paul Westfall now. He passed away on the mm-hmm. uh, on 2nd of January. Yeah, another one who just really cut his teeth uh, both ways uh, in terms of being a player or coach. Uh, got in as a player, uh, which... You know, certainly the, the the accurate thing to do. Uh, another All American at USC, but he wasn't gonna go that. He wasn't gonna win a championship there. That was like during what uh, the UCLA run of John Wooden. That was just so disgusting. No one, no one was gonna touch that. All right. I mean, as good as USC was, and knowing that, yeah, you're well, second's not bad, <laughs> and that's pretty much what you got to hope for. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I mean, and he was, and and in, as a pro, he first of all he was traded uh, with two second round draft picks by the Celtics uh, for Charlie Scott, which is always an interesting trade. Uh, but that year in '76, he helped uh, he helped them make the their first NBA Finals appearance against the Celtics mm-hmm. in what is probably been often called the greatest game ever played, um, in the Game Five of that series. He helped push that game into triple overtime. He's probably the best player in that game. Uh, but it's for the Celtics ended up winning with Charlie Scott. Um, but, that, I mean, he was he was a hell of a basketball player. He fortunately got inducted into the Hall of Fame back in 2019, so he had a little time to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, another, another very sad situation, pathway cancer. 
Another, uh, another great one. Uh, champion, too, with the Celtics. Yep. Yeah, he won, he won in 74 with them. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah. back when the Celtics never went more than five years between championships. <laughs> oh. So... Hey, look, look at your team now. Look at my Raptors right now, one and six. But that's not for uh, I mean, I mean, your, your Raptors' biggest problem is that they're in Tampa. The Tampa Bay Raptors. It doesn't sound right. Yeah, you, you, we had the Buffalo Blue Jays of the Tampa Tampa Bay Raptors. So yeah, it sounds like that's that's a that's a bad seventies film. <laughs> Buffalo Blue Jay, <laughs> Buffalo Blue Jay, and and the Tampa and the Tampa Bay Raptor. Starring Billy D. Williams. <laughs> yeah, double feature. It's hung all the way down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, both numbers. Both guys had their number retired. Uh, Phoenix, Phoenix has got his number forty-four up. Denver, his forty-four. Syracuse, the forty-four. USC is twenty-five, but still. I mean, it's it, it's it's really sort of sad. Uh, but it's never going to stop being sad when we're focusing on older players. And accomplishments. Yeah. Yeah. So let's yeah, just uh, throw one out not for that old, though. I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like you need to get into your 80s before I really start thinking like you, you're old enough. But mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, th- brain cancer is just, it's oh, what you're going to do. Yeah, that's awful. All right. R- before we get to the main event here, should, can I just run through the rest of the ones we have here this, sure. uh, this week? Absolutely. Um, so we have. Let's start with a couple. I have one bigger name, but we have a couple of hockey uh, people here. Mm. Uh, we had Gord Renwick, who was the um, Canadian Ice Hockey Administrator, was the uh, president of the Amateur Hockey Association of Canada, and vice president of the International Ice Hockey Federation. Uh, passed away at the age of eighty-five earlier this week. But more importantly, um, uh, Gil, uh, sorry. John Muckler passed yeah. away. I don't know if you remember, saw that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I did. Uh, former Oilers head coach. Yep. Oilers, Rangers. Um, was uh, he, he actually was recovered from open heart surgery when he passed away. But he, he started as a player coach in 1959 with the AHL's New York Rovers and spent 20 years with the Rangers, North Stars, Canucks for joining the Oilers in 81. Uh, he did. He was coach of the North Stars for a while, um, and uh, he was named the top coach in uh, minor league hockey back in 1979. Yeah, a long so, time name. Always like it was one of those names. Like growing up, you always hear his name periodically here and there. Just felt like he's been around forever. Obviously, that's not yeah. the case. But it's just one of those names that I think a lot of Canadians just may have just heard that name. Just. Sometimes and passing so often, and not always like put ever put uh, put it all together. But yeah, M- Muckler's been was around so long. Yeah, so fifty nine to like, he was working all through two thousand and eight when he was with the Coyotes. So I mean that's a long career in hockey. But he passed away at the age of eighty six. Um, we had a. Uh, couple of Hall of Famers who passed away as well. One is a horse. A Hall of Fame horse, Goldakova, hmm. passed away on my birthday at the age of 15. Member of the European Horse of the Year 2010 and all sorts of horse awards, but the, in the, inducted in the United States Racing Hall of Fame in 2017. Hmm. Passed away. But more interestingly, I guess, uh, Pat Patrick passed away, the founder of Patrick Racing that does um, champ cars in the Indy Racing League for years. They were one of the founding members of Karts of the Kart Series. Um, anyway, he passed away at the age of 91. He's, he was elected in the Motorsports Hall of Fame in 2018. So Patrick Racing is just one of those ones that you kind of heard growing up all over the place. Um, and finally, one from the world of music. Uh, Jerry from Jerry and the Pacemakers passed away. Oh, that's right, yes. Jerry, Jerry Marsden. Um, so Jerry and the Pacemakers formed back in 59. Um, they, uh, I mean, they were all massive. They were massive. Yeah. Charms for years. 
one of those bands that has never actually made it to the uh, the hall, but has been under consideration. Um, yeah, I think they, were, so, they might mean, have been like two big U.S. hits away. Like they dominate. They were one of the many that dominated the U.K. charts in the right, 60s. Right, yeah. yeah. What are, what, I'm trying so, to I mean, the, the, their biggest hits in the U.S. were uh, Don't Let the Sun Catch You Crying, and Ferry Across the Mersey, Mersey yeah. and I'll Be There, uh, among others. So, but yeah, he passed away earlier this week. He was uh, how old was he? I didn't actually see. I think he was seventy-eight, if I remember correctly. He was he was seventy-eight. So that's everybody I have on the on the death march this week. Okay, so I guess the next death we'll talk about is the person who died off the final list for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I know that's, I know my segues aren't good. That's why they haven't sponsored us yet. <laughs> I'll get better. Okay. Okay, I really won't. <laughs> I thought maybe we'd just go through through them alphabetically. Sure. Yes, yeah, so, and for those who weren't sort of like keeping up, the Pro Football Hall of Fame, it's one of Evan's favorites. It's one of my favorites. We can really just sort of like track it from beginning to end. Usually around 130 preliminary candidates, sometimes, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. Cut down to 25, and then it cuts down to 15. Usually, yeah. I think you and I are pretty good at predicting the 25. We're never going to be perfect, but we do pretty good. Mm-hmm. Figuring out the top 15, usually we're pretty good. I think we would have – I never actually made an official prediction. I would have been 13 for 15 had I done one. I, I should go find that because I did post it on our little uh, page there. Hold mm-hmm. on. Let me see if I can find exactly what I did. I, I'm pretty sure – I didn't put Clay, uh, Clay Matthews on there, um, but I did pretty well. So I'll find it as we're talking. Okay. So, yeah, we'll start alphabetically. I gave this guy sort of like in my head like an 80-20 shot of making it as a finalist. Jared Allen, defensive end, superstar in, the, in terms of uh, pass rushing. No shock here to me yeah. that, he's made, that he made this, this far as a first-year uh, first inductee. I can't see him getting in this year. But nobody who, is, who got this far in their first year of eligibility doesn't get in. It's not possible for him to not get in. Yeah, so this year, I mean, I will say we'll, we'll get to him, but there's two, there are four first ballot guys on our list. I think he's fourth of the yep. four, which is by no means a shot at no, Jared Allen. Um, because this, because the other three are, Two are going to be first ballots. The third very well may be a first ballot. Mm-hmm. So the fact he got the far is a very good sign for him to get in uh, in the not too distant future. I honestly think that this year is interesting because I think there may only be one spot open uh, when yep. we go through this next year. There's going to be at least there's going to be four spots open. Um, so Jared Allen has a very good shot. I don't think he's going to make it this year. But he has a very good shot. Of making it next year, yeah. And just reaching this stage at the at uh, again on year one, colossal. Right. Yeah. Because I, I will argue that better players than him, and again, it's not not a shot at Jared Allen. I I like Jared Allen, but better players than him did not achieve this. True, and I will say that I predicted when I came up with it that Jared Allen's presence on this list would mean that Bryant Young fell off. I mentioned that in our chat, mm-hmm. um, and I was right on that. Because yep. Bryant Young was a surprise first time, first time on the finals list last year. Um, but we had, we had four players, like I said, coming in first time, and he was the only, and we had a couple of lesser finalists. I hate saying it that way. If you're a finalist, you're an absolutely incredible player. But there are a couple who I thought were fairly low down mm-hmm. on the finalist list. And the only one who had a direct competitor come on was Bryant Young with with uh, Jared Allen, and I thought that'd knock him off, and it did. Yeah, I got that was when I would have got wrong because generally they don't switch shit up. Not a ton. No, that's so true. My predictions would have been more based on not what I wanted, not who I thought was best, just based on what I think they will do. And yeah, that, that one I would that one I would have been wrong. 
Uh, moving on, this is one I liked. Uh, I, I did call, but I called this a couple years in a row and have been wrong. Rondé Barber, very, very happy. Yep. Yep. He's, he's, he's been the person on the semifinals list who's the most surprising to routinely be on the semifinals list without jumping up. Yeah. So I also predict that Barber was going to make it. Yeah. I don't think he's going to go any further this year, but again, this is the step that you've got to take. Yeah, and part of the problem is they've been so bad at putting defensive backs in over the last years. I mean, there were almost no safeties in the hall until very recently. They've been putting a bunch in, Mm -hmm. and they've needed to clear some of the other players out. There were just too many of them at once, and Barber was a victim of numbers. But over the last couple years now, they put in last year's Atwater, Palomalu. year before that, we had three with Champ Bailey, Tylaw, and Ed Reed. Year for that was Brian Dawkins. Like it, they just they just cleared a whole bunch of them out all at once. And um, Kenny Easley was year before that. I know he was a senior candidate, but he was another guy mm-hmm. getting in. So over the last over the last you know four years, we've had what eight, nine. Well, with the other people from the 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 hundredth anniversary team, we've like had eight or nine defensive backs. And now that they're cleared out, now it gives Rondé Barber some space. So mm-hmm. I think I, he's well deserved. Yeah, definitely. This one's interesting, uh, Tony Baselli, and I think you're predicting he's going to take over uh, Fanica's spot. Fanica's going to get leapfrogged again, is what you're thinking. I think it's entirely. I think it's entirely possible. We're just from what we are hearing, or what I've been reading. The the argument that's being made is that Fanica's, Fanica only played 91 games. And of all the offensive line has gotten in, the least anyone has played, I think I saw on the announcement show, it's like 160-something. So he only played 91 games in his career. But three of those years, 97, 98, 99, his best three years, he was either, all, he's a first-team All-Pro, either with or ahead of four current Hall of Famers. It was uh, Orlando Pace, Jonathan Ogden, Willie Rofe, and who am I forgetting? I can't remember who the fourth one is. I'm forgetting. Um, I can't remember who it was. But anyway, uh, he was he like he was when he was playing. He was absolutely the best at his position. Problem was he wasn't playing a, that long. So he's an interesting one. We had we've had transcendent offensive players get into the hall. Um, for in, in short time periods, Ter, Ter, uh, Terrell Davis comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a question as whether a transcendent offensive line would get into the hall. That's that's going to be interesting. Um, so I think Baselli, if Baselli doesn't get in this year, he's going to get in next year. But I and, I and just because I said I think he's taking Fanica's spot, I'm not sure he is taking Fanica's spot. I wouldn't surprise me if two off if both those guys got in. That's year. possible too, um, because, like I said, I think there's one open spot. I think we have, I think we're gonna have three first ballots, an offensive lineman, and one other player. If that other player were Baselli and or Fanica, who I know we're going out of order, but yes, Fanica's on the list for this. No, year. actually, I, I got no problem with uh, just sort of like talking Fanica, you know, right now. Uh, Fanica, finalist of was this year number six. Year number six, yeah, six four six because he was a he was a first uh, ballot uh, finalist too. Yep, does have the Super Bowl. Yep. Does have your traditional hardware in terms of your Pro Bowls nine nine Pro Bowls, six first team All Pros. Deserved every one of them. Yep, I the best offensive yeah. lineman not in the hall by a long shot. Yes. Yes, uh, and you and I, since, since we've known each other, we've been talking about this guy. I, I don't know what we can possibly, that's why neither of us are talking about him next week, and we'll get to that. Okay. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll get to that too. Yeah, well, we've got sort of like on the docket soon. But yeah, Fanica Baselli, I, I want both in the hall. I just don't want to see Fanica have to lose to another one of his peers again. Who whose overall work does not match his, right? But 
Exactly. Yeah, I, I, guess, I guess one of the differences here is Baselli was a tackle who tend to get a little bit more respect True. from the hall than Fanica, who was a guard. Yes. Um, but according to Pro Football Focus's Hall of Fame monitoring thing, they came up with, mm-hmm. in the history of football, Alan Fanica is the fourth best guard ever. And we're not talking number yeah. four. Who's three? Of all time. Uh, I'd have to go look that up. I, I have okay. my one chart here. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll go get that for you. Yeah, no worries. But like, um, yeah, so I, I, I have my chart of everyone. So of all the people who are nominated this year, of the 107 of them or whatever, he's the second highest rated player in football history on on this list. He's ahead of the two other guys we I think are going to be first ballot Hall of Famers. Mm-hmm. Um, number, number one on, on the list is number one in the history of football, according to their chart. And um, he's getting it. Well, you so. and I also speculated, I think actually it was you who brought it up first, that potentially with the Centennial class, Fanica got hurt because another Steeler got in. So they might have been trying well, to lot, avoid Steeler bias. A lot of, a lot of Steelers got in. Mm-hmm. Is the problem um, because I, I, I think, and I'm not going to hold this against. We have to hold it against somebody from all the folks got in last year. But Palomalu got in as a normal candidate, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, and then we had uh, Donnie Shell get in, and I'm not going to hold it against Donnie Shell. So I'm going to hold it against Bill Cowher, who should not have been one of the coaches. No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. Yeah. I, I, I agree. And and again, I, th- I think we should also specify we're not holding it against Cower himself. It's the process. Right. And you and I were very right. very open that if Bill Cower did not have a job on television, Bill Cower does not leapfrog uh, uh, Tom Flores and uh, Don Coriel. There's no doubt in my mind. Uh, agreed. Absolutely agreed. It was interesting. Hold on. Here's here's the list of guards all time, okay. right? So the average Hall of Fame guard is a 108.82, according to their monitor. Mm-hmm. He's a 140. <laughs> He's 140.23. Here are the people who are here are the people who are the above average Hall of Fame guards. So not just Hall of Fame guards, but like Hall of Fame guards who are above the average point. The best one ever is Bruce Matthews. So Bruce Matthews is a 158.7. John Hanna at 153.1. Randall McDaniel, 148.75. Alan Fanica, 140. Then the next four below him, still all above, Larry Little, Larry Allen, Steve Hutchinson, Jerry Kramer. Wow. That's all you need. That's all you need to know right there. I mean, it's, it's crazy. The people just below him, by the way, Gene Upshaw, then Jari Evans, believe it or not, who's not eligible yet. Uh, Joe DeLamelor, Gene Hickerson, Will Shields, Russ Grimm. All those guys are Hall of Famers. So the only person who's eligible for Hall of Fame in the top 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 players, uh, or guards, according to their thing, who is not in is Alan Fanny. I do think it's the... <sighs> Well, last year I'll again go go with that, that Steelers theory. So, I really that's the one I'm cheering for the most. Mm-hmm. Uh, out of out of yeah, all and, of this, and agreed. And and it's and again, I'm not knocking Steve Hutchinson either. But Steve Hutchinson, like I said, is is below Fanica on this list by a significant margin, mm-hmm. and got in as a guard last year. If that that no again, Steve Hutchinson is a Hall of Famer. Alan Fanica is a better player. <laughs> no, it's it, I, yeah, it's it's pretty cut and dry to me. Uh, in between that, because the whole alphabetical thing that we were doing, one that I find kind of intriguing, uh, Leroy Butler. Because I, and uh, why I find it intriguing? It's not it's not stat wise. Stat wise, he's he's got what you're looking for. He's did a great job on a great team and was a big part of the lore of the Green Bay Packers. And when you talk about lore of a team, there's only a few teams where that matters, Green Bay being one of them. What I find really interesting about him is he's doing all the little right things. Uh, on Twitter, he's contrite yet still cocky, if that makes any sense. He's laying out his case yeah. without doing it in a completely arrogant way that, cheer, that makes you 
want to cheer against him. He's doing all the all the stuff with NFL Network, and if the, if we think that stuff doesn't matter when it comes to those interviews and making yourself available, it sure as hell does. Butler, I uh-huh. think, out of all of these guys, I, again, could be wrong. I'm just going by what I see. I think he wants it the most. Interesting. And what that necessarily means, I don't know. But if there's a game to be played, and I've always said, at the end of the day, it's people voting on people. Mm-hmm. Good or Probably bad. True. Yeah. So Butler is playing the game the right way if he wants to be in. And I think he does. Now, I don't want this to be misconstrued for me for anyone thinking that I don't think that he belongs in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I think he does. I don't think yes. he's the best. He's in the top five of this group. I may never think that. No. It's just that hard to get through. But I do like him a lot. Yeah, Butler's going to be on this list for six or seven years, is my but, guess. Yeah, I think you're Again, right. Again, like, I think Rondé Barber just got up here. But the, the number of defensive backs mm-hmm. that are still in the cycle here is a lot. Um, well, I, I, this year is interesting because I want to know who the fifth person who's getting in is. I said next year, I, I was talking about this with somebody who, who is going uh, on, on Twitter today with someone who is really gung-ho about Zach Thomas getting in. And they, there's always a Zach Thomas comparison with him and Brian Urlacher. Mm-hmm. I said, I think it's going to be really hard for Thomas to get in this year, but I think he'll be a Hall of Famer next year. Um, just because next year we have DeMarcus Ware and four open spots. Right. right. There, there's just nobody else. I guess if Jari Evans is going to be the, the other one. So, But I don't think Jari Evans is a first foul Hall of Famer. He's not. Um, and, jo- and I think Josh Cribbs is also up next year. And kick returners. I, Josh Cribbs can't get in until, uh, until uh, White, Billy White shoots Johnson is in. Um, but or I, think, I think Cribbs is up. I'm trying to remember. He may not be, but if, I, if I'm wrong, that's fine. Uh, Billy White, Chief Johnson, still needs to be in before Josh Cripps. So the moral story is DeMarcus Ware is the only potential first ballot Hall of Famer next year. Um, so we have, we're going to have four spots that's going to open, and I think that's, event, that's really going to help Butler because I think we'll get a, rid of his best case scenario is that the extra spot gets taken by one of the defensive backs this year, mm-hmm. and then Next year, another couple get cleared out, and now he's just there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so let, let's, yeah, stay I, I so let's stay on position then. So let's stay on position. Sorry. Let's stay on position then. Okay. Because the. Okay. I'll just sort of like move ahead. Charles Woodson, first ballot. We think he's a lock. I, I'd say it's ninety nine point five. Yeah, Charles Woodson's getting it. Yeah, I think so. But he's, there's a bigger lock on, on this list. The other guy right. that if he gets in who I think Butler is behind, I don't know whether that's right or wrong, but he is behind, is John Lynch, free safety. Yeah, agreed. Uh, and, and Lynch has also got the, uh, uh, unfortunately got a little bit of the chic tag to him because he's the one who's been on this list the most at this point. Because yes. this is his eighth, eighth time as a finalist. Like, Fanuc has been here six times, mm-hmm. but he's been here eight times. Um, and he, like I said, oh, he's seen all these other defensive backs go in before him at this point. Um, so I, I, I think it would not surprise me if he ends up being the fifth person on the list this year. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think there's a very good chance that he gets in, not necessarily because he's the fifth best player, but because he's been waiting long enough, and again, mm-hmm. these factors, right or wrong, play into how people think. Correct. Yeah, by the way, I, I went and checked. I had 14 out of 15. Okay, on, so, uh, so you did better than me. Prediction. Well, we, should, we should have made a bet, yeah, and, and you would have been a beer up. Yeah, well, well I, I'm already going to get my extra beer, I'm pretty sure, because I'm, I'm sure that the extra guys, the first ballot guys on the baseball I'm going to get at least 7.5%. So. Mm, could be. Could be. I, I, I don't think it's going to be close. With all of them combined, I think it's going to be over 10. So, 
Well, if we're that confident, we could move it to 10. (laughs) No, 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 no. No? Okay. (laughs) Can't can't blame the guy for trying. Can't blame him for trying. Yeah, so, like I said, I think think that... uh, I think that Butler's going to have to wait for. I mean, Woodson's definitely getting out of the way this year. I, I, I think he hope if he gets John Lynch out of the way, then the door is open for Butler next year. But uh, he he may if he may still have to wait a while. It wouldn't actually surprise me if Rondé Barber jumped him too, even though he's been on. He got on the foul first time last year. Barber's the first time this year. Well, that's what so. I was going to ask you: is do you think Barber can overtake Butler? Because again, right or wrong, you're not going to take two DBs from the same era from the same team. No, I mean Barber needs Barber needs Lynch to get in first. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, but I mean, just like the like among the semifinals to get in. I mean, we had Eric Allen, we had Rodney Harrison, um, like we had a whole bunch of other defensive backs who didn't quite make it through this time, who are also still there waiting. At, at some point, brought Darren Woodson was there, um, so there's a, there's a bunch of them. He's I, I think that the one who has the best. I mean, Woodson's getting in this year. One I think has the next best chance though is Lynch. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Okay. So we got a two two very interesting wide receivers. Uh, Tory Holt, mm-hmm. who was in that same spot, you could argue that Rondé Barber was. Taking a little while to yeah. get in, and I think probably because of a teammate, but here he is. Uh, that teammate, of course, being Isaac Bruce, who got in. Uh, although Holt did become a finalist at the same t- at uh, the same time of Isaac Bruce, so I thought he would almost have to wait till Isaac Bruce got f- further before he would even be on the same list. But this is his second year. I really like Tory Holt a lot. I think there's a case. I do think that when we're looking at over dy- just dynamic play and borrow a, a term that uh, our new friend Jack Silverstein uses a lot, the eye test. And a lot, of, a lot of people use that term, but who passes that better? That, and I mean anyone on this list, uh, Peyton Manning included, than Calvin Johnson. Yeah, I mean, his... Calvin Johnson's only problem is the shortness of his career. But other than that, uh, there's nothing you can say negative about Calvin Johnson. Like I said, you already mentioned Peyton Manning. We can just bring him up. Mm-hmm. Peyton Manning's going to be a, is if he's not in the first ballot, there should be a congressional investigation. Forget everything else that's going on in Congress. They need to take care of that. First. Oh yeah, that, that'll that'll, that'll work out Peyton's well. Straight. I have so much confidence in that. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, so. So Peyton Manning's getting in. Woodson's getting in. Uh, Jared Allen is, I don't think, getting in. But the third, the third one who's going to be an interesting debate is Calvin Johnson because it's not just Holt; it's also Reggie Wayne. Yes, uh, on this list. And like I said, the the list here, the average Hall of Famer is a hundred has a hundred score. There are only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players on this list who have over a hundred score. One is Reggie Wayne at 107.1. Another is Torrey Holt at 104.27. Mm-hmm. I'd also like to point out that my pet, pet, pet project, Kevin Williams, has over 100 score, but he didn't get out of the semifinals. And we need to figure out why everybody hates the Vikings. But anyway, um, it, I, don't, I don't think Torrey Holt's getting in because Calvin Johnson and because of Peyton Manning. Because I wonder how much sentiment there's going to be to put Wayne in with Manning. Hmm. Interesting. I, I don't know if there how much there is, but they there are three clear Hall of Fame wide receivers. All three of those guys are Hall of Famers, and all three even will if, get in at some point. Even if Wayne is the least exciting of the three, probably not not as a player, but like just in terms of Q rating of the three of those guys. Um, right. It will be that will that will be I think the most heated debate in in the hall room. Like when Ty Law got elected, he had the longest time anyone talked about him. He, like they when he was elected, they did over twenty five minutes on Ty Law, and the next closest was like twelve. 
Um, and he got in. It, I think it's going to be that way with the three wide receivers. They're all going to be, it's going to be a long time with all three of them. Um, and what I, I actually, like I said, it, it wouldn't surprise me if, if, uh, Calvin Johnson's the first ballot Hall of Famer, but I think I would be surprised if not one of these guys got in. This is like that one weird thing where if none of these three got in, I'd be mildly surprised. If one got in, I'd be mildly surprised. If two got in, I'd be mildly surprised. All three of those th- scenarios seem possible to me. Mm-hmm. I think most likely with one of them, I just don't know necessarily which one it is. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be really close. Um, if I had my choice of the three, I mean, just based on talent, and it's kind of opposite of what I'm saying to Sully, but just based on talent, I'd pay, pay Calvin Johnson. I think he was the best of the three players. They actually asked Charles Woodson on the uh, announcement yes. show. Yes, yeah, I saw that. Who had guarded all three of those guys, who was the best. He goes, all three of them had their own challenges, but there was only one guy who was called Megatron for a reason. Like no, he's absolutely. faster than you and way bigger than you. And there's nothing you can do about it. He's a physical freak. Not so only, I would take that too. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, not only that, uh, Calvin Johnson didn't have something that Tory Holt and Reggie Wayne had, which was another oh, okay. wide receiver <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah. He, uh, he did not have Hall of Fame quarterbacks going to him. Although... Well, no, I'm not knocking it the quarterback. I, I'm, I'm, knocking the, the I'm not knocking the quarterback. I like Matt Stafford. I, I'm saying that there was not a number two option anywhere close to his level. At wide That's out. true. Who are his number two guys? I'm sorry, I misheard you. Oh, no, no, I'll, no, I'll, I'll get to you. I, 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 it's, it's like Holt had, you know, he had Isaac Bruce, mm-hmm. uh, Reggie Wayne, I'm blanking on the other guy he had, but it's, he wasn't the, he, Mar- Harrison, okay. Yeah, Marvin Harrison, yeah, but right. not, not only for part of his career. Yeah. Then it was like Pierre Garçon. I mean, with, with, with Calvin Johnson, we're like dangerously close. I shouldn't say the word dangerously. That's not the right word. But like close to like when the Vikings used to talk about the Randy ratio. You get it to Randy 40% of the time, that being Randy Moss. That's what, that's what you want to see. Calvin Johnson was that type of guy. So do we penalize him for the fact that he was the only real guy on that team on mediocre teams, but he stayed loyal and then just said, you know what? I'm just going to keep my health going. I'm not, I don't know that he should, he should be penalized for quitting early. Some players maybe should. Tiki Barber is one, and I, and I get why it always happens to him. Calvin is not that guy to me. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I, I was just looking for Reggie Wayne. Yeah, it's Pierre Garcon and then T.Y. Hilton. Mm-hmm. So there was a there was a separate second option for both those guys for him. Although Garcon, T.Y. Hilton is a lot better than Pierre Garcon ever was. Um, yeah, no, I agree with that. Um, and I don't feel like Wayne or Holt are so overwhelmingly Hall of Famers like Danica is mm-hmm. um, that. Like I, Baselli's a Hall of Famer, but he can't get in before Fanica. I, Colt and Wayne are Hall of Famers, but but Megatron could jump in in my head, no, just it, because he was good. a better player. He was. Uh, he so. was. Uh, he's without. I'd say he's the third best player on this list, and just the and just like the, the greatest athlete on this list. So who do you have in front of them, Manning and who? Woodson. Woodson? Yeah. Okay. But in terms of overall, trophy winner. Yeah. But as per, as, uh, per, as in terms of overall athleticism, you know, it's uh, Megatron. Yeah. So I guess if we move on from there, uh, this one could sentiment carry Clay Matthews a finalist yeah. on his final year of eligibility into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Could it happen? He's the, he's the, one, he's the one I didn't predict. 
I, I don't think I don't think Clay Matthews Jr. is getting in. Um, I think he's Everson Walls from 2018. Um, so Everson Walls got was on the uh, was on the finalist list one time. Um, although to be fair to Matthews Walls was not like a consistent even semi finalist. Uh, Matthews this is his fifth time as a semi finalist. Mm-hmm. First time as a finalist. I personally don't. Be- I personally believe this list has 13 Hall of Famers on it, and Matthews is one of the two who's not to me. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I know who your other one is. Mm-hmm. Saying that, sentiment has gotten people in before. Because here's a great guy from a football, roy- literally from football royalty, I'll, I'll say that. Moment, like a huge social media campaign, a diehard fan base, now, I, I don't know how much the, the voters listen to the fans. Again, people listening to people, probably not that much. But there are some interesting statistical comparisons. But to me, Matthews was never the guy that I, wor- that I worried about when my team's playing them. Now, granted, New Orleans didn't play Cleveland too much. But was Clay Matthews yeah. ever someone that you, that you thought of Ah, shit. You didn't make you shit your pants. Yeah, I... I don't want to... I don't want to defame the man. It just... He is... As I said before, using that... Their the Hall of Fame monitors... Uh, our pro football focus is... Mm-hmm. Thing here. Clay Matthews Sr. Is the... How many are there? the 33rd greatest linebacker, outside linebacker of all time. And 31st is his son. Like, it's just, he's just not, he's just not good enough. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know what else to say. Like, he's in between Bill Romanowski and Ken Norton Jr. Both very good players. Neither of them were Hall of Famers. And again, Bill Romanowski my second least favorite athlete of all time behind <laughs> Heinz Ward. I mean, fully is another list. Um, I, I thought, I thought, uh, Ryan Braun was number one. Oh my God. You're right. Ryan Braun. <laughs> I, I'm going to, I'm going to throw something out here about, uh, Matthews. Uh, and then, and then anyway, we'll, sorry. We'll, oh, it's all good. Uh, it's my fault. I brought up Ron. I knew, I knew where that was going to go, mm-hmm. but I, I went there. I mean, it's like, uh, I know what happened when I turned left and I decided, yeah, you know what? I'm going to turn left and maybe this time that, that pickup truck won't be there, but uh, Ryan Braun, I will just put it this way. Ryan Braun is a terrible human being and I will leave it at that. No, it's all, it's all good. One of the stats that people are comparing him to, we're going back to Clay Matthews. So, and a lot of that sort of like push. I don't know if that came directly from Jennifer Matthews. I think she, uh, the the daughter. I think she was retweeting a, another article, and they were comparing traditional stats. And you and I both know, and I think a lot of people listening know, traditional stats are really tricky in football. Mm-hmm. Especially, you're avoiding defensive players to the best of your ability if they're really that good, which is why approximate value can sort of help level a bit of a playing field. So Clay Matthews, 138 approximate value. Again, very, very good. Over 278 games. Uh Junior Seau, 268 games, 189 approximate value. That's a huge difference. Uh And... One where I think that that almost trumps everything else because again, tr- traditional stats, we've always got to be very very careful because context is everything. Especially, and we just came off of that with the conversation about uh, Calvin Johnson, whose single season sometimes wouldn't would not be the best if you just looked at receiving yards. Well, he also had a bit much bigger trouble than than a whole lot of other elite wide receivers who was helping him out. Not a whole hell of a lot of people. 
But so I just wanted to sort of throw that out about why I'm not huge on Clay. I wouldn't. I, I will say this: if Clay Matthews did get in, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna have a problem with it. Yeah, he'd be the second worst player according to that at the position because he's better than Dave Wilcox is in. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're comparing. I mean, Matthews was zero-time first-team All-Pro, four-time Pro Bowler. Mm-hmm. Sayaho was six-time first-team All-Pro, twelve-time Pro Bowler. Yep. No, absolutely, and I guess, you, you just can't look at traditional stats all the time. You can't. They'll, they'll fool you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people who are semifinalists who are ahead of him who didn't make it this far: Cornelius Bennett. Hmm. Uh, Pat Swilling was on this list. He didn't make it. Joey Porter was a was a nominee. He didn't make it. Like they're just he was he's a very good player for a very long time. And unlike if this were the basketball hall of fame, he'd probably be in. But this true. isn't. This is the football hall of fame where they elect five people out of the Probably thirty or so who are who are really out, who are really worthy of it, uh, and I he just he's not there. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't think he gets in. I think this is a one and done, and I don't think he ever gets in because I think as soon as he gets that seniors pool, that seniors pool is so deep, mm-hmm. and the way they are setting it up, there's so few who are going to get through that little top of the bottle there that. I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine him getting into the hall okay. if he doesn't get in this year. To, to that point, I'm. So just I, gonna, I'm I just want to go on like one little tangent because I think there's only one player that I can think of in recent memory where going into the seniors pool was colossal for him, and that's Ray Guy. Right. So oh, agreed. I agreed with Ray Guy, and actually, someone else who didn't get from semifinal to final who may end up being. His only way in is Steve Tasker. That's what I was going with this. Because yeah, because I think I think Tasker Tasker's a whole separate category because he would be the first of his kind, just like Ray Guy was. Mm-hmm. Ray Guy was the first punter. Shane Leckler will be the second punter whenever he's up. But uh, but there's been no there's been no. Uh, Pure non-returners, special teamers in the Hall of Fame, and that Tasker is the first one. And at some point, Matthew Slater is going to retire, mm-hmm. and Matthew Slater is just going to push that whole conversation again anyway. Right. Whenever he gets there, now I think Slater is going to play again next year, and then so at least one more year, so at least six more years for Slater is even a nominee here or even eligible, but. At some point in the next decade, I fully expect to see Tasker's name in a, in a senior pool just as an up or down. Is he getting in? Yeah, and uh, if, I don't if he makes think he'll say the same yeah. thing with Matthews. There are just too many other people like him. Right, right. So th- that's – it's kind of weird that I don't – I didn't actually feel that bad for Steve Tasker, who is someone who I do champion for the Pro Football Hall of Fame, because mm-hmm. I, do, I do think he's got a le- – as weird as it sounds – he is one of those rare guys that I think because of his unique position, because he's one of those names that could just sort of like come up and because it would also come from a different pool of people who might sort of go through that, that might be an easier path, longer path, but a path that he could get in. I I just, I just see it. Yeah. Yeah. Because that way, yeah, too. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, because that way, too, you know, we would always sort of like beats him and what beats, uh, so would beat Ray Guy all those times. When you look, when Ray well, Guy yeah. would go up against all these other players, like, is he really one of the best five? And he wasn't. No. Yeah, you go back, you're like, how is nobody elected Ray Guy? You're like, well, look who got elected instead of Ray Guy. That was part of it, too. Exactly. Um, but, but here's the thing I will say. Tasker's last year of eligibility is next year. Right. That's a wide open class again. 
if he gets on the ballot, I told you there are four open spots. Mm-hmm. He may get on his one shot. I don't feel that way about Matthews. Yeah, this could be either moment sentiment might have been just okay. Here, here's your bone. Which, if that's what they're thinking, I don't really like it because I don't want to. You just don't give false hope to the daughter who's been so active and trying this so hard. And I've, I've never spoken with Jennifer Matthews. I had spoken with Alicia Kramer. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sort of like the echoes of, of this and just how much it meant to her. And I'm sure it meant, means more to her than it does to Clay. I, and I could be wrong. I don't know. Uh but the similarities there are, are very, very striking. The only difference is Jerry Kramer was a better candidate. Yeah. And the same people who were keeping him out were also the same people who, who had him as all decade and a member of the 75th anniversary team. Or is it the 50th anniversary team? Doesn't matter. It's yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Either one is impressive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he would, is at one point the only one who wasn't in it, but he, but he was good enough to get to that point, but not the next. Something doesn't add up. So anyway, yeah. that's sort of like my, my take on that. So I'm sort of glad we talked about Tasker. Uh, Sam Mills, that's your other guy who I know you're thinking is not a Hall of Famer, and I'm with you. And this is the Saints guy talking. Dens, mm-hmm. Mills is story over substance. Yeah, and and as someone who should be ahead of both these guys. He didn't play the same so the same team as Mills and play the same position as Matthews mm-hmm. is uh, Pat Swilling. Yes. Pat Swilling is a better player, in my opinion, than both of these guys and isn't sniffing anything. Um, so, again, it, it's, not, it's not necessarily fair to compare, to compare people because they're teammates. I think it is fair to compare people who are playing the same position. But, like, just because one guy's a Hall of Famer, on your team doesn't mean you're not a Hall of Famer, but this is it's backwards. As long as Pat Swilling isn't getting consideration, I'm sorry. Sam Mills may even get in the Hall of Fame. Pat Swilling was a better football player than Sam Mills and is just not getting any sort of respect and it doesn't make any sense. This might sound awful. If Sam Mills is alive, is he a finalist? I don't know. And if we've got to ask I mean, that because, question, I think that's because, all we need to know. Because both of these guys are not as good as the one person I was wrong with who was going to be on this ballot. Because mm-hmm. I thought Patrick Willis was going to be here. And Patrick Willis was so phenomenal. I, he should be. I have, I have Patrick. And Patrick Willis has been, this is his second year of eligibility. He's been a semifinalist both years and hasn't been on the, the finalist list yet. But I had, I had my 15. I had Mills on there. Because, like I said, the two worst people on the ballot last year, in my opinion, the two people I don't think were Hall of Famers were Mills and, and Bryant Young. Bryant Young had directly had Jared Allen come on, which, in my opinion, knocked him out. Mm-hmm. Mills didn't have any real competition, so I kept him. And I thought, and I, I added Rondé Barber to the list, and then I thought that Willis was also going to be jumping on here, just with other people falling off and everything else. There were really two spots, in my opinion. I thought it was going to be Rondé Barber and... And uh, and uh, Patrick Willis and Patrick Willis is not here. Uh, again, short career, he only played nine years, but way better than either Mills or or Matthews. Mm-hmm. We only have uh, two players left. Uh, one, your guy, uh, Patriot Richard Seymour. I don't yep. know if I'm right on this one. I feel like his momentum that was sort of building up is really stalled. And it's, it's so hard to sort of like gauge what momentum is when we're talking about discussions for a hall of fame, but Seymour, who you and I both thought could squeak in at number as the fifth guy last year and and didn't, I don't Mm -hmm. feel he has that, that shot this year or am I, am I seeing something that's not there? Yeah, so last year, Edger and James got the spot that we thought that Seymour was going to get. Because mm-hmm. last year, we were pretty sure that 
Paul Mahler was getting in. We thought that um, we thought Fanica was getting in. That spot went to Hutchinson. Mm-hmm. We there was a lot. We knew a wide receiver was getting in. One of them, and then the thing Isaac Bruce. We knew a defensive back was getting in. That was be Steve Atwater, and then that left that fifth spot open. Uh, that one ended up going to Andrew James. Uh, Seymour. I'm wondering whether Seymour's um, momentum is only dulled because of our group in your mind. Because he's not as popular in our group as he is, I think, to the outside guys who covered football. That, and, that, of, and that could be. The, well, go ahead. It, 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 that could be. It also could be that you think of Richard Seymour, you think of the Patriots. And this is the first year – in 21 years that when you think of the Patriots, you're not thinking of Super Bowl contender. Yeah, I suppose that's true. So that could be in the back, that could be sort of clouding my judgment too. Yeah. I mean, he is the best defensive end who's eligible for the Hall of Fame who's not in at this point. Um, the, the, so according, according again, according to that stat, here's here's the, your defensive ends of all time: Reggie White, Bruce Smith, Jack Youngblood, Michael Strahan, Willie Davis are the top five. Six is J.J. Watt, who's still playing. Seven Julius Peppers will be up in a couple years. Deacon Jones, Carl L- Eller, Jason Taylor, then Richard Seymour, then Howie Long, Chris Dolman, and Dale Hampton. Like he's ahead of Howie Long. On what on their on the way they do things. He's seven seven time Pro Bowler, three time first team All Pro, three time Super Bowl champion. Part of his problem is that his stats don't look quite as impressive. But again, the way the Patriots play defense, none of their got those guys stats are impressive except for Ty Law because you can count interceptions, mm-hmm. and that guy was ridiculous in picking. Like Peyton Manning said, if anyone got Ty Law in the Hall of Fame, it was me. <laughs> right, he was just great at, at picking off and in, uh, picking off the ball, and particularly Manning in big games, and that helped a lot. Seymour was more down in the trenches guy. He was sometimes when they were in the four three, he was an interior defensive lineman, and then see, so there were times he was outside on the four three in what the Patriots called the elephant position, which Willie McGinnis was really the forerunner of, and Willie McGinnis, another Patriot who doesn't get nearly as much credit with the Hall of Fame process as it should. Um, but, but, uh, Seymour was an absolute beast and a massive problem for everybody. He was what made those early teams go along that defensive line. He and McGinnis made it so that Vrabel and Bruschi and those linebackers, uh, uh Ted Washington, uh, Ted Johnson, Ted Washington was also there. He was a, he was a nose tackle. Well, those those Patriots defensive teams are really what carried Brady's early career more than anything. The, those defenses were awesome. And Seymour and Law were the two best players on those defenses. Um, so again, I think I think this uh, I think this is a tough group for everybody. Honestly. It's cuz you have two first ballots, you're going to have an offensive lineman, and then you have the whole wide receiver thing. They're just three Hall of Fame wide receivers all at once. Like mm-hmm. really good one of the receivers. I think one of them's getting in. I think there's only one spot for everybody else. So if his if his momentum is blunted, that may be part of it. Like I said, part of it not getting in before was the Patriots finally put him in the Hall of Fame. The Patriots fans, right? Finally elected him the Hall of Fame last year. And, I mean, he'd been eligible for a while. And if your own fans aren't going to elect you, how's the Hall of Fame to elect you? Um. So I think that's out of the way. It, I would be slightly surprised if he got in this year. I still think it's possible he can sneak in. If Richard Seymour is in the Hall of Fame this year, none of us are going to be shocked. It'd be no. surprising just because of it's a very thin eye of the needle, the thread, but somebody's getting that fifth spot, the, and there's no reason it shouldn't be Seymour. The only one that would shock me is Sam Mills. I can rationalize, I, I, not, I that, it, not that I think it'll happen, but I can rationalize almost anything else. Sam Mills, I just I don't think, see how, how that, what, what dominoes fall to make that happen. I don't th- I think a Rondé Barber would also shock me just because it's his first year and there's other guys apparently ahead of him. That's true too. Um, yeah. So I, I think those two 
which shocked me. I'd, I'd be like, okay, if Clay Matthews got in, I wouldn't be very excited about it. We only have one other person. I want to talk about him too quickly as well. And that's Zach Thomas. Yeah. Um, who also has a lot of comparisons. There's that whole thing up against he versus Erlacher. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zach Thomas is, is according again to that, that chart, Zach Thomas is the fourth best player on this list. He's a, uh, He's the seventh greatest inside linebacker of all time, according to that of their their things they're doing. Uh, he was as someone who was in his division. He and Jason Taylor, and honestly Patrick Sertan, whose son is going to be very highly drafted out of Alabama as soon as he's eligible. Um, those, those three guys were just a nightmare for us as Patriots. Uh, he is absolutely an incredible player. And the only people ahead of him, just by the way, according to this, are Ray Lewis, Mike Singletary, Jack Lambert, Dick Butkiss, the just retired Luke Keachley, and Brian Erlacher. Oh, that all. That is <laughs> That's it. And the guy right behind him, by the way, Patrick Willis. Uh, so it's it's... He is, I don't think he's going to get in this year. It wouldn't shock me. I'd actually be happy for him if he got in because I think he's incredibly deserving of getting in. I'd be a little surprised. I think they're going to try and clear a log jam somewhere else or they'll put, it's possible they put in Matthews in his one shot at the Apple here. Um, but I, I'm, Zach Thomas is going to be a Hall of Famer 2022. Like, I, I, would, be, I would be pleasantly surprised he got in this year. I'd be shocked if he's done it next year. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way that you do. I think I'm a little bit more negative on his chances, not his career. I'm, I'm a thousand percent with you on his career and why he deserves. I just mm-hmm. don't see his percentage being that high to get in. But again, sometimes I'm, th- I'm, I'm trying to think what they're thinking, not necessarily what I would do. And that's a dangerous thing. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, Zach Thomas, five years, five time first uh, first team All Pro, seven time Pro Bowler in twelve years. By the way, Patrick Willis only played seven years, five time first team All Pro, seven time Pro Bowler. Same same as uh, same as Thomas. So you got to figure if he played more than seven seasons as a starter, he probably would have been in already. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just Keachley also five and seven in eight years. Butkiss it was five and eight. In nine years, so I mean, he's he should be in. That's, that's all I can say. So I guess closing off with the just rounding out the ten people who did not make it from the semis to the yep. finals: Eric Allen, Willie Anderson, Cornelius Bennett, Steve Tasker, Fred Taylor, Heinz Ward, Patrick Willis, Darren Woodson, Bryant Young. Yep. So I've already, we've already talked a lot about Willis. I will say one thing I got out of our group, um, and it's completely changed my opinion. Uh, no one, my opinion on no player has been changed more uh, than on this player is Willie Anderson. Same. Same. I, I mean, the, 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 the argument that I heard for, for Nalen uh, from... Uh, from Tom. Uh, from Tom... Uh, it was ex- excellent, but I already had Namlin as like, when we did this, he was like my number 26 on our 25 list. So it wasn't hard to convince me on Namlin. Uh, it was Namlin versus Saturday, both of whom I think are incredible players. Centers are very undervalued for the Hall of Fame. It's very hard to have counting stats as a center. Um, so uh, it, Tom Namlin is, is going to be a tough road to hoe, but I never really considered Willie Anderson. And I was wrong. And honestly, Willie Anderson, I predicting will be a finalist next year because either, either Fanica or Vasily or maybe both are going to be off this list. And he's your next offensive line. Right. Yeah. I hope he's not a one and done in terms of the semifinals. There was a lot of great information coming out on Willie Anderson that a lot of people, myself included, were not aware of. And I want to learn more. Because he played for the Bengals. Well, exactly. None of us paid attention because we played for the Bengals. 
For, no, exactly. Yeah, you're right. That 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 uh, statement answered itself. But I do want to see him again. I I'm really excited about that. Uh, I guess what we're gonna do next week. Uh, I'm not. We're gonna have to find another time where we're because usually we record Thursday nights. But next Thursday night, you and I are recording something special uh, for regular listeners and for regular visitors to NotInHallOfFame.com. We are doing our own committees, and my God, it's been hard. But it has been a blast. We love it. So we are mimicking, again, who we would pick from this group and our group because we went from the whole process on. So we've actually got 19 players that nine of us are going to debate. Each one of us is going to be presenting two players. We can't go as long as what they do in the Pro Football Hall of Fame because, well, we're just not. It's Thursday night. We have jobs. <laughs> well, yes. There's that. But we're going to do our best. We are going to put that online so that you can hear our process. And you can tell us what you like and what you didn't like. And, hey, if you want to join in and you've got something to offer, we're planning to do this every year. And we're pretty mm-hmm. excited. Uh, I'm excited about it. Uh, you and I have uh, done a bit of planning already. We get to do a test run soon, so that way we can actually make sure it looks right. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 going to be interesting to see how this happens. Everyone gets to see. I mean, the level of sexiness on this podcast, <laughs> on this on this video, it's going to be it's going to be on the charts, a low on the charts, but you know, on the charts. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, um, if you if you like white men discussing football, this is the show for you. <laughs> <laughs> that is entirely true. Yes. Uh, like like we said, though, I mean, this was our first attempt at doing anything like this. It was literally like, hey, who wants to do this? Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, the group is the group of people who responded. Uh, and it's been a great group. And honestly, it's been absolutely wonderful. Hearing these sure. different perspectives, and at least none of us are fans of the same team. No, I think that makes a big difference too. We're also a little low on West Coasters, um, but which is hard. Uh, it's but, hard. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, do they even have sports fans out there? No. Um, <laughs> so, uh, well, not any good ones. Uh, oh, yeah, I mean, we're just we've just been holding out for it as a Los Angeles Chargers fan. Oh, um. So, yeah. So bon, it, it's Bonnie, been amazing. Bunny Tyler has been holding out for a hero since 1983. No, no one's going to get that. Never mind. Right, I mean, if you can, it, you, it depends on what our demographic is, my friend. Yeah, you're the one who knows those numbers. Um, no, I don't. No, I, get, I, I, just, I just get told the male female ratio. That's all I know. Huh. All right. But anyway, so you know, it's, it's been wonderful hearing all the different perspectives. Um, and, and I mean, we have Bears fan, we have Bills fans, we have a Broncos fan. Uh, what else do we have? I mean, you're a Saints Lion. fan, I'm a Patriots fan. Lions fan. Uh, and, but Lions. I, I think with every single one of us, we can all sort of take we – we've all got that ability to be objective. Of course, we've got our 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 own bias. Uh, I was sort of I wanted to see what everyone else picked, and I just sort of like let things sort of fall to me, and then I assigned one. Uh, I'm okay with what I got. Uh, I've got Ron, I, so I'll be presenting Rondé Barber and Tory Holt, which is not who I thought I'd be presenting, but I got no problem with it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited because I have I, mine are easy. I mean, I have the Patriot in Richard Seymour, and I am now the number one fan, member of his fan club, Kevin Williams. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm heavy in the defensive line on this. It is a absolutely Travis Shamockery that, uh, that Kevin Williams is not at least a semifinal. Yeah, and then for those uh, who might be a little confused, that's from our list. So where ours differs, uh, yeah. Kevin Williams is on our top 15. Steve Tasker is also someone who we've put in our top 15. So we're going to have our Bills fan, uh, Glenn Champion, that particular one. 
have, who am I blanking out on? Willie, Willie Anderson, right? Yes, yeah, sorry, Willie Anderson is another. Uh, Ted's going to be taking that one. And who's our fourth? Uh, I'm blanking completely. Uh, I, this is I, I was told there'd be no math. <laughs> Is, I, is it Patrick Willis? Yes, it is. Sorry, thank remember. you. Yes, Patrick Willis. Yeah. And Paul's got that one. So we're yeah. going to have some great discussions. Uh, I'm pre- I'm looking forward to doing some of my research. I Rondé is going to be a lot easier for me because as a Saints fan, he scared me a hell of a lot more than John Lynch ever did. But mm-hmm. I, have, I already pretty much know position-wise where I'm going with that one. Uh, Tory Holt, I think. Well, you know what? I'll, I'll save it for next week. I, I'm, 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 yeah, take, I'm pretty much sure. Yeah, I'm okay with what I got. I'll put it that way. I, I will say one thing, though. We are, we're going to have the 19 players, but no one's debating Peyton Manning. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yes, actually, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, Peyton Manning, we've decided there's absolutely no point in debating him. Because why? What, why? Who, who yeah. are we convincing? Yeah, that that chart I told you about with all time players ranks and everything. Peyton Manning is number one all time. I told you the average Hall of Famer is a hundred on their rank, rating system. Peyton Manning is a two hundred and fifty eight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's so much not in doubt that even Mike Vanderjat, if he was on this committee, would vote for him. And he's nothing but an idiot kicker. <laughs> or idiot kicker. He, I don't think he ever sounded more Southern than when he was complaining about Mike Vanderjet. Yeah, well, I will say say one thing. Say what you want. Tom Brady's never thrown any of his play, uh, teammates under the bus. So, Also, Tom Brady's forehead may, remained a, a, a normal size throughout all parts of his life. It has never grown and or shrunk. So. I, I'll close with this. Uh, I knew this one guy who used to, who uh, worked in Jasper with Pauline, my wife, and he played uh, Canadian college football, uh, an Oakville guy. His least favorite player of all time is Peyton Manning. Why? Because he hated it because he threw Mike Vanderjet under the bus, someone he knew peripherally. <laughs> I'm not making that up because he came from the same town. That is town love, I guess. I don't know. I'm from Burlington, Ontario. I could give I'm not going to cheer for you because you're from Burlington, but that's just me. Yes, the, the petty rivalries of Ontario cities. Which I didn't know how much it existed until that very moment. How do you, feel, how do you really feel about Windsor? Oh, Windsor. Fuck it. I told you that's where, <laughs> the place where my car ever got broken into and they took all my stuff and then left a bottle of piss. Thanks, Windsor. <laughs> They were just, they're just like the guy who broke into, uh, into the office and took an envelope of, uh, took an envelope of, uh, Nancy Pelosi's and left a nickel. He didn't steal it. He paid for it. <laughs> oh, well, well, yeah. I mean, I, for, I forget cause like it's right by the border. So I guess that whole point of free trade isn't quite working out yet. They haven't figured it out after all these years, but well, I can laugh about it now. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, all right. So hopefully, hopefully the country, our country, isn't in full-out civil war um, or, or a coup d'état. I'm sorry, it's not a coup d'état. It's uh, coup d'état only comes from the wine region of France. Otherwise, it's just you know white supremacy trying to take over. Um, well done. I, but, I think uh, all the sommeliers listening are clapping. <laughs> Anytime I can make a champagne. That, that champagne joke. If it's 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 just it's just spark it's just sparkling white supremacy. Um, yeah, uh, but yeah. So I think it will, it'll be interesting when we'll have that, and then I guess we can have our post mortem on Friday. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we could do that. Uh, I'm, well, this, something will always come up uh, at some point. We'll also have a oh, baseball always, preview too. It always does, and I don't know if we have any other people whose Hall of Famer is number 44, but I hope they have a very safe week. Uh, let's put Hank Aaron in a bubble. Oh, my God, that's right. He is 44. No. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. 2021. Like yeah. 2020. <laughs> 2021. Oh, the first 2021. It's 2020, but worse. <laughs> 
<laughs> this, this one goes to eleven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey! If you can't, if you can't yeah. laugh, and if you can't yeah. beat them, there I've got a guest room here in Barbados, so you know where your family can go once that uh, coot det tot happens. <laughs> Oh boy. Anyway, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> all right. Take care. Bye. Thank you all so much for listening. We hope everyone stays safe. Look for a lot more new material coming from us in 2021. It's going to be a monster year from us at NotInHallOfFame.com. Take care, everyone. 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 Take care, everyone.